Happy Floss Tube Friday, friends. My name is Carrie. This is Tiger Lily Designs. Welcome to Floss Tube episode number 75. Whoop, whoop. Welcome. It is almost the end of July. Crazy, bonkers. Um, August is almost here and then September and all the things. I mean, I'm stitching Christmas, so like it shouldn't be a surprise. But welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's Floss Tube Friday episode. If you're new here, welcome. I do lots of fun quilting and stitching and knitting and all the things. And um, today, look on the table, it is all cross stitch, friends. I do not have any other crafty netter endeavor updates for you because you will see if you follow along on Instagram, you know what I've been doing this week and I've got something exciting to share for you. So like I always do, let's run through a little quick table of contents. I don't have notes, but we're just going to dive right in, let you know what we're going to talk about today. Today, I do have two finishes. Yes, I know. It's crazy. I wanted to have, let's talk about, we'll talk about it. We will. Um, so I have two fully finishes. That's exciting. I also have the giveaway winners from last week. I have my whips from this week. I stitched on a couple things that weren't the finishes, um, as well as some stitchy kindness, some stitchy haul, and then the exciting announcement at the end of the video. A little tiger shop update. If you know what I've been doing, that announcements at the end. Stay tuned. Okay, so without further ado, let's just dive right in. So if you've been here all July, you know that my goal, we're not going to call out the elephant in the room that I did not finish my goal of 10 ornaments for the month. It's okay. I give myself the grace to do because I zigged and I squirreled and I did all the things and just, you know, who's surprised? Not me. But anyway, um, I did, I don't know how many, and maybe next week I'll have a little recap of the of the July because to be honest, there's still like three more days. Maybe I'll just get her done. Yeah. But today, Friday the 28th, I have two more fully finishes. So these were finished stitches as well as fully finishes. So that's fun um, that I want to share with you. Let me grab, I totally just brought the finishes and not the project bags. Let me grab them. My first fully finished for this week is the finished stitch that I shared with you guys last week. It is a Merry, a classic Christmas, Merry Christmas, from Hands On Design. It was my first linen project. So if you're new here, I am an Ada stitcher. I stitch all the things, big girls, small girls, all the things on Ada. Love me some hand-dyed Ada, because A, I can see it, and B, like, it, I just, beautiful, beautiful. But I have broaden my horizons. This is my first linen stitch. I have all the magnifications trying to figure it out. But um, so I, like I said, this was my first one. So I'm pretty excited about it. This was a, um, it took me about a week. It's my, this is my project tracker information card. So, so I started it on the 12th, finished stitching it on the 19th, fully finished it yesterday. I'm stitching this on 36 count lakeside linen. I did a full over dyed floss conversion. We talked a little bit more in detail about the stitching last week. So if you want more of that, go back to the last week's video. But in the meantime, look at my fully finished. Yay. So I finished this one into a sweet little pillow finish for the tree. And I love it. Um, this was my first pillow finish for the tree. I am I love ornaments, love Christmas ornaments, but I also love my glue gun, right? And so I do lots of flat finishes with a glue gun for my most of my, well, this is my first pillow. So the, all of them are hard finished, whether they're finished on like Chantel's wood boards or just flat boards or however I finish them. It's it's that kind of stitch. But I decided my linen one, I did not want you to use the glue gun. <laughs> I, I don't know why. But I just didn't feel like glue gun was going to be. So I, I used the Queen of Finishings Tutorials, Vanna Pfeiffer. And I would just, I mean, it's kind of just like a pillow. But then you add the hang tag to it, right? But um, I did use, I did, you know, just... It's always good to reference the expert and I love doing that. So I finished this, like I said, with um, her tutorial. It's awesome. Um, I used, I made my own cording, which I love. I had a lot of people, I showed you guys this on Instagram yesterday. This was, yesterday was finishing day. And so I showed you guys my little power drill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I use a power drill for making my cording. Um, I also use the Krynik tool, but I broke the little liver thing. So anyway, it's interesting. Power drill makes it zzz, like you don't have to wind it like a fishing. I love it. Making cording is easy peasy. I had so many people comment saying this is kind of scary. So don't be scared. Okay, so I'm going to shoot a quick, like, like really five, two minutes. I will add a little video just to reference to show you how I make cording with my power drill and the Krynik tool. But um, 
it's beautiful. Like I love the effect that a two color cording, two skeins of DMC, that's all this was. And it just looks so professional. If I, I mean, I like, I didn't pay a finisher for this. This was totally me. Now I will tell you, I, this is my, I finished the other one first. So this is my second sew on the trim. I usually, like I said, am a glue gunner. So it's a little, you can see it's a little cattywampus. I mean, I'm just owning it. This is the truth, friends. But from the front, when it's hanging on the tree, you don't see the sideways cattywampusness. So you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. It's a needle and thread. You just stitch it on real quick. Mm, real quick. You stitch it on, and it, but it just looks... Mwah. So, I, but I did want to show you, I, I wanted to show you how I finished the back. So I went shopping, like I said, I finished this yesterday and the other one, um, but I went shopping. Now you see my fabric wall, right? I got some fabric wall. My Christmas fabric actually isn't in the line of the view. It's down, it's on the shelf below. I have a whole shelf of Christmas fabric as well. Yes, mm -hmm. we won't talk about my, my fabric collection problem right now. But, so I went shopping in my Christmas fabric to find the perfect backing fabric. Well, you can see this is kind of a little more primmy than I usually, kind of bright, fun. So a lot of my Christmas fabric is bright and fun and all those things. And I was like, but this is such beautiful linen and these colors are prim-esque. I mean, I'm not gonna say I'm prim. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. But it's definitely so. I found this one in my stash. This was a Riley Blake from last year, and it, see, it's bright white. And I was like, oh. so the colors, the green and the red, perfect. It plays nice. The concept of the plaid, I really liked it. But the bright white was just too much. Do you see what I did? Any guesses what I did, friends? Sure did. Brewed myself a cup of coffee didn't drink it, and don't put my eight inch square, I cut an eight inch square, this actually measures out to be five and a half by five and a half, 36 count, I did a three quarter inch um, seam on the side and finished it up, so I, I had to cut myself a generous eight by eight inch square, because I wanted to be able to center the, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so I cut out it and dunked it in the coffee, let it sit overnight, mm-hmm, and, and it had a front too. Because the other one, I did that. It's perfect. It just primed it up enough. Now, of course, I'm not stitching on it. It's not going to get wet. I didn't have to worry about heat setting the coffee thing. I just let it sit there overnight. And then in the morning, I dumped it out, rinsed it out until the water ran clear. I'm sure like if I dropped a bun, like it would probably still run coffee. But it's a Christmas ornament. Like it shouldn't be near water. It should be fine to go. And it smells like coffee. So mm, fantastic bonus. So that was finish number one. Let's just stick with finishes, shall we friends? Okay, so if you saw last week, this was one of my stitches. Let me pull out my project track. Here we go, yeah. Oh, I need to write in. Yes, okay, I did. So I started this on 720. I finished this on the 25th, stitching it. I did another full color conversion on this one, mostly to overdyes. It was called for in DMC. This is part of the Little House Needleworks Sheep Virtue series. There's 12 of them, which is adorable. I started them with the joyfulness. As you can see, I stitched that on 36 count, another linen, Lakeside Linen River Willow was the color. Ah, so, so fun. Oh my gosh. Listen, so this was the first one that you can see. So I stitched this one and then again, I just finished it. You know, you just nice, it's nice and squishy and flat. And it's, I, I worked on my corners like Ms. Vanna tells us and all the things. Oh, there's, no, okay, good. Um, but I just, I picked another, this is another custom cording that I made yesterday. Again, just two strips, two skeins of DMC. Easy peasy. I loved it. And here we go again. So you can see this one's not quite as obvious because it's just another one of the Riley Blakes. Yep, this was part of the same collection, I do believe. But the words are are um, bright white. But I like the red. Woo! That's the great thing about pillows. They can just fall and break. So, uh, or not break. And so, you know, you can see I just finished this. It's got a little bit, it just calmed down the words. So they're a little more coffee 
kind of goes with the, the priminess of the sheep. But I love these. I love these so much. So I am going to add, and I just didn't get to it before. I, I pressed record this morning. I am going to add my cute little, I use those gourd charm light bulby things and add um, a little bell, I think, and or definitely the 2023 charm because that's how I identify the years. I like to put those 2023 charms on my Christmas ornaments because in 10 years, I'm going to have 10 years worth of Christmas ornaments and not remember did I stitch that in 2020 or 2028. I don't know. It really doesn't matter, but I think it's just fun to see the progression. I mean, these are going to be my first stuffed ornaments on the tree. I'm so excited. Um, I kind of now want to finish. I mean, so a couple of the other finishes I have to do are all flat finishes because they're coordinated. They're part of my Prairie Schooler Santa series, flat finishes. My 12 Days of Christmas from Vivster's flat, flat series. So they all match. But I'm having lots of fun. Um, I definitely am going to do all 12 of these. And I can now, so we'll just tangent real quick to um, just a piece of haul because it's, it's on message. My friend, when I showed that to you guys last week or two weeks ago that I had started this, I had a sweet, sweet kind viewer reach out and say, okay, I know you only bought four, but I have the whole series of 12. Do you want them? <gasps> Yes. So my sweet friend, Miss Sandy, thank you, Sandy, sent me and shared with me the whole collection of the sheep. So like I said, I had bought the four at my local on this because I was like, okay, I'm just going to start with four because A, I didn't know if the linen stitching was just going to be a phase or whether I was going to like it. So I didn't want to commit to all the things, but it's so cute. I'm so excited. So Let's just go through them real quick. You want to see them just in case you're like, oh, maybe I need those. So this is Hope, number one. Number two. So I think she was missing two of them. And it might be the ones that I have. So number two isn't here. But number three is Peace. Look at that sweet. Number four is Courage. Oh, so sweet. Oh, number five has the little button pack so they all did come you could buy just another button company's buttons so if you see which i have i didn't because i'm not using the called for count i think they're, they're called for on 30 count weeks dye works fabrics and so i was using 36 so the buttons were just gonna be like swimming them so this is faith is number five number six is simplicity so sweet number seven is patience Look at that mama and the baby sheep. Yeah, you know we need patience. Number eight is wisdom. And I just love how the sheeps have a little texture in each, each of them. They're not, some of them aren't just plain like, but some of them are friendship. Look at this sweet little friendship sheep. Kindness is number 10. Love that. Oh, number 11 is gratitude. And number 12 yeah, I started with the last one, is joyfulness. So those are so sweet. And thank you, Sandy, for sending them and sharing them with me. I can't say how quickly I'm going to do them, but this one I had stitched in less than a week and then finished the same week. So if I wanted to, I could get her done. I mean, I probably, you know, focused a little bit because I was having so much fun. I love throwing in these small finishes between all the big girls that I have. Let's just be honest. Big girls... And kind of take over the time but i love these so those are my two finishes this week so before we switch to the other two whips i have i did just want to go ahead and throw in today's video giveaway i'm gonna pass the stash you know do you want to do this one it was so quick so quick so fun brand new let me get it in the mail to you use the word mary in your comment down below and you can win this chart and i'd love for you to just get it stitched up on, on your tree to match me so that is today's giveaway and i'll go the, the giveaway winners from last week i'll do later on but i just wanted to you know stay on so stay on top topic as we say so let me just show you the other two whips that i did work on this week i did pull out a couple one is in my cute little project keeper from the club in april um this one is so close I, that was the moral of the story now did you guys see hold on before i tangent in the whip this monday so fun um sarah handmade by sarah w and i did a fun live whip sow parade now if you've been around a while you know i mentioned the name sarah and a lot of the sows and a lot of the things we do um together we are one of those instagram 
pair, we, we just became Instagram instant stitchy friends and we have just been having so much fun doing sales. And so we've talked about it. She started a YouTube channel. I will link it down below. If you don't already watch her, you definitely should. But we've been doing sales and we decided once she started YouTube, I was like, okay, girlfriend, we're going to do a like YouTube together. We're both solo shows. And so I just want you to know you people that have little duos, that's a whole nother ball of fun. Let's just be honest, because right now, here we are in the studio, it's Friday morning at, you know, 8.30, and I'm sitting here talking to myself in a camera. I had so much fun on Monday, doing a little, like, back and forth banter. It was, it was an hour and a half long. Like, sorry for the movie, friends. I didn't know we were going to just, but when you get into it, it was just so much fun. We were just back and forth, and it was great to show you, like, some things I finished, but let's be honest, most things Sarah's finished because she's a needles on fire type of girl. And so what we showed you a lot of, now a lot of the times we do the same thing. We're stitching on the same fabric, same floss, but a lot of times we're not. Um, you know, we're both Ada girls, but she'll choose 14 count or I'll choose 14 count and she'll choose 18. Or we choose different fabrics or we choose different color fabrics or different flosses. A lot of times I do Tiger Lily conversions for lots of things. And sometimes she joins me in my custom color conversions. And then sometimes she just sticks with the DMCs or the call fours. So it's fun to see the stitches on different sizes and different flosses and different things. So we had so much positive feedback. So I will link that video down below if you or looking for a movie to watch. But anyway, it was just so much fun and you guys loved it so much. And thank you so much for all the sweet, 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 sweet comments that we received. And we definitely are talking about doing it again. I don't know when, I mean, we don't, it would just be fun to banter a little bit, I guess. But you know, it, the, the purpose was like, these are all the things that we've whipped, salad, finished together. We do, we've already got another sale starting. She talked about it. She teased another one that we haven't, we haven't talked about it yet. So there's always things adding, coming and going. So but we'll just have to see where we go with that. This is one we're not doing together. Oh, Sarah, pick it up. No, I'm just kidding. So this is um, Four Little Girls. I'm doing this one right here. So I pulled this one out. This one went to StitchCon with me. And of course, like I mentioned, I did a full Forbidden Fiber Co. Um, floss conversion on this one. Ah, so close. My goal was to have this one finished, but then I got, I don't know what I did. I mean, I just decided, oh, okay, no. So it's real, real, real close. So, you know, I'm working on, there's a flower motif here. There's another motif. There's like four little mini motifs. Listen, if I just focused on, and then I have to finish some of the flowers, but if I focused on this one, it could be done. So it's real, real close. I love the little butterfly. Of course, I love the girl in the hot pink dress. So this one is real close to finish and then I will probably put it away. I do love the other two, I will do them, but for right now, eh, no. So it, it, it spoke to me for a couple days, not enough to get a finish, but I did get some work on it. So that's why I'm good to show you as the whip. The other whip I pulled out was one night I was just like, okay, I need, sometimes I am a what I wanna do stitcher. I, I can't be, I, I tried failed to be one of those stitchers that's like on this day of the month I do this and on this week of the month I do that I that's, psst. that didn't work for me I'm so excited if it works for you I, I want I'd love to come up with a plan that wasn't like what do I want to stitch tonight because sometimes it's kind of like what do you want to make for dinner and then you have to think about it and you're like ugh, just the this, the agony of making a decision sometimes takes time so I, I'm, I'm considering that whipstick thing that Chantal did but then I've been afraid that I'll pick it out and be like, nah, I don't want to do that. Like, defeats the whole purpose, right? But we'll see. So this, I pulled out. This is my OG mini keeper. Mm -hmm. You know what's coming this week? We'll talk about it in a little bit. But this is my OG mini keeper, keeper that I made because I was traveling and I wanted, this was last September. I was traveling and I wanted a smaller mini keeper. Oop, don't show you the chart. Um... So this was a chart I started to stitch um, when we went to on vacation. This was a one color stitch that I picked for my vacation travel last September. I'd love to bring monochromatic stitches on an airplane for like hours and hours and hours. So that way I wasn't working up. I didn't have to change threads and all the time. So I picked a long dog. This is my first long dog and it's called Forevermore. Super cute. Love it. Um, and so, of course, you know, I didn't iron. And so what I did, this, like I said, this is 
the original OG mini keeper. But I, I have, I'm doing this in a Mohs silk. It's this beautiful variegated like navy color. And then what I do, oh good. I load up six needles, no, three needles, because, you know, six stranded floss. I'm doing this on a 16 count LFA linen. I think the color is nor'easter, but it could be New England gray, whatever the gray is. Yeah, there's no project tracker card in here. Why? I don't know. But I started it September of last year. I know that. And it's on an LFA linen. Surely know that. It's on 16 count. I think it's New England. It's, it's her gray. It's nor ah, pickles. Anyway, but I load up needles and I put this in this magnet box that I kind of put together. I just put four magnets on the inside. It's just a Moda tin box. And so... Then I have the load. So when I'm on the airplane, I, I when I stranded, you know, when you pull the six strands, I go ahead and load up three needles at a time. So that way I was didn't have those loosey goosey needles. So anyway, one night this week, I was like, oh, let's just go back to that. And I got a lot done. Now, I haven't touched this since I showed it to you on my whip parade in the beginning of the year. That's how much I haven't worked on this. But what I did do this one night or two one, I think, is this whole section. Like I had just come over here, so I went ahead and I did this whole section. Now I did get this guy set up for fill-in. See this dog is a mirror image. The whole thing is a mirror image, which is adorable. So that dog on one side is ready for fill-in. The squirrel is almost filled in. And then, then there's a leaf down at the bottom. I was on a zoo. So I wanted to set this up because Chantal's retreat the pep rally and the first weekend in September that I'm going to my next retreat. I'm super excited is, um, she's been doing these zoom meetings at, like every other Thursday. So that, so people can get to know each other a little bit before you get there. Super fun. So last, this week was the first one that I was able to attend. I like rearranged the whole schedule because I wanted to be able to, they've had like three or four of them and I haven't been able to go. So my plan was, you know, if I'm going to sit there for two hours and talk stitching, I better stitch, right? So I had this all set up to do fill-in work. I figured that's the only way I was going to actually get something done. But then I pulled over something else on it last night. But anyway, that's the whip that I worked on this week. So fun. So that's it. The two stitchy whips that I worked on, not bad, if I do say so. So let's go ahead and jump into, I did just want to go ahead and do one more stitchy kindness thank you. So my friend Lorraine, thank you. She sent me a sweet, sweet, so back in May, I did these Mother's Day bundles that I sent out. There was like 10 of them, I think. It was just a surprise Happy Meal bundle for people that were nominated. So fun. But Lorraine got one of my bundles and she was so sweet. She sent me this sweet little crochet bird. He's just, I mean, I can't wait to just pin him up right here on my board. And so I can just think of my sweet friend. Thank you so much. He's so sweet. Love him. So um, let me just show you some of the stitchy haul that I got because it's fun. Everybody likes to be enabled, right? Um, just a little bit. I did get Chantel's Pep Rally box. I'm not going to show it to you because it has an exclusive design. Super fun. Plus this cute little thing that Chantel made for us. I don't know when she's going to release it to the masses, but it's adorable. Um, so I'm just going to work on that. So that did come in the mail this week. And then also this week. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I, if I can do 30, if I can do 36 count linen, why not try 40? I don't know. So I decided let's go ahead and get a piece of 40 count. Ooh, I haven't looked at it on camera. That is some awesomeness. So this is Dirty Teacup from Needle and Flax. So fun. So it's 40 count fat quarter. I have no idea when I'll put it, what I wanted to put on it. I am going to stick with the smalls probably for the linen just because I like the win. Um, you know, I don't think I'm going to put a big girl or anything big on a sampler yet because I don't know. I just, I like the win. I like the, the, the mini victories. And so also this week, color and cotton, I've never stitched with color and cotton. I've tried to grab some of their stuff, try to get in their clubs, can't get in them, maybe one day. But this week, Somehow I, I follow them on Instagram and I get the notifications and all the things. And I saw that they were having this missed eye Hank sale. Now I don't need any more Hanks because I have quite a collection of most silk Hanks 
And yeah, that's coming too, but that's not here. Um, but while I went on there, I went, when I went searching them, then I decided, no, I got, I was able to get this beautiful, like I said, I can't get in their thread club. I can't get in their fabric club. It's all full. But in the meantime, they had this one piece of 40 count linen that was ready to ship. It's called cornbread. It is such a beautiful, golden, honey, cornbready, beautiful, beautiful color. Um, I don't know what I'm going to put on it again. So I'm just adding, building, doing my collection of linen. This will be like my fourth linen to compare to my, I don't even want to tell you how many Ada's there are. But while I was there, I also saw that she was, they were having a grab bag, thread grab bag sale, you know, mist dyes and things. And so if you don't know, August is my two year floss tube anniversary. So I am planning. So I was on there. I was like, well, listen, I'm going to be making some cat's pajamas, um, giveaway bundles for my two year extravaganza. And what would be, how perfect would these be to throw in those bundles? So I did grab 10 of them because there might be 10 bundles associated with the two-year extravaganza. Make sure you don't miss. If, you, if you're if you subscribed to the channel, awesome. Make sure you hit the bell because it's one of those things where you don't want to miss out. These bundles are getting good, getting good, but that's August. So we're going to talk about that later, but that's just a little bit of my stitchy haul that I got. Yes. Okay, friends. So one more piece and then we're out. Oh no, two more. Giveaway. So let me give you the giveaways from, from last week. Now, last week, we, I had four giveaways. My sweet friend Joan did a little past the stash with some of her charts. And so we added four of them to the giveaways. So the first one was this cute one from Katie. I did extras. It was house rules. And so my friend Linda Norris, congratulations. So as always, if you are a winner of one of my giveaways, contact me. My email is down below in the description box. Shoot me an email saying, hi, my name is, and I won. Give me your shipping address and I'll pop these in the mail to you this week. The next winner was for this sweet Madame Chantilly spring little tiered tray chart. You had to use the word spring. And my friend, the gem stitchery, congratulations. The next one was this adorable little woodland blanket stitch. So cute. All these little animals. They'd be so cute stitched alone. So Karen Holler, congratulations. And then last but not least was this Mayflower tree chart from Hello from Liz Matthews. And my friend Lynn Ellis, congratulations, friends. So again, if you're one of those four winners, just reach out and let me know. Okay, friends. Are you excited? Are you here? We're ready. So like I said, I showed you guys during StitchCon and a lot of my StitchCon friends have shown the Mini Keeper. Now, the, the OG Mini Keeper was a product of a need I had last September when I was traveling. I was like, I love my Project Keepers. They're great, except for my carry-on bag is getting squishier and squishier and fuller and fuller. And I need something small and it's just going to have one project. So let's just take the mama project keeper and slim it down a little bit. So I did. That was just me. I personally used a, like I said, I used a Dresden quilt, quilt block that I had just laying around, put it together, whatever. You guys did like it then, Not the, but I didn't do anything with it. I was like, it's, you know, it, it's just a smaller version. Well, so for StitchCon, I did these cute, adorable, let me show you. I did these cute, adorable Tula Pink patchwork because I love Tula Pink. I keep every single scrap if it's like, unless it's like an inch, but every Tula Pink scrap I keep. I love, love Tula, the whole shelf right there. So I, I was like, how fun would this be to take all my Tula, fussy cut some of the birds and the flamingos and the rose, did a little fussy cut patchwork mini keeper for my table mates at StitchCon's. Well, they loved them. Everybody else's stitch com was like, where, what? So, so cute. So remember, let me just show you. Mama and baby. Conceptually, they're the same, 
just this one's bigger, holds lats, big, but this is mini. It's perfect. It's, it, you know, it can hold, it can still hold, you know, like I have four different ornaments going in the front, the front, the back, the back, four different ornaments because it's perfect. What your ornament stitches, if you're just stitching in hand, it's only like an eight by eight inch square. Perfect. It can hold a four inch hoop. Mm hmm. Yep. Slides right in. Actually, I think my hoop might be five inches. So it slides right in in the back. It doesn't go in the zipper, but it slides right in the back. Easy breezy. Um, so this was my patchwork keeper that I did for StitchCon. Well, so many of you were like, um, where's the pattern, friends? Where is the pattern? We want to sell. I did have some of them for sale in my July 15th update. You guys loved them. And so I will have more. So let's just, let's just talk real quick. So I will, and I do, they're already cut right here on the table. Um, the August 15th drop shop update will include some of these exact Christmas ones. So that's exciting, as well as some other ones. So patchwork galore in the August 15th update. But in the meantime, if you sew, if you are so inclined to sew one yourself, the wait is now over. As of this video going up right now, the mini project, mini patchwork project keeper PDF pattern is live and available for you to get. What this is, is a PDF download from my website. The link will be right down below in the description. But if you don't want to go in the description, you just go to tigerlilyshop.com and you go to the shop. To the, to the category patterns, and it should be the first pattern that comes up. You click on it, you add it to cart, and then you check out, and right after your checkout, there'll be a button for you to click and download the PDF chart. Once you download the PDF chart onto your computer or your iPad, once you do that, this red button right here is actually a hyperlink. So the hyperlink will take, so meaning if you, open up the PDF. This is live text where you click this. It's like a clickable button. You click that button and it takes you to an exclusive unlisted. So you cannot get to this video unless you have the PDF instructional video. That is my, that's what comes with both of my patterns. So like I said, I do and always have had a pattern for my full size project keeper. And it's a 60 minute sew with me video. It teaches you how to do the double pocket or the bobbin pocket, um, bobbin and pocket one. So you have the options. So the patchwork one is again, just like it. So if you liked that one, that's what I've been doing all this week is working, shooting, preparing, doing, writing, editing, all the things for it to be ready to share with you today. So this video will teach you not only how to make a mini keeper, it's the patchwork one. So I love it. So it gives you all the measurements. You can see it's perfect. It's a four by six. So it's a 24 square patchwork. The math is done for you. No math needed. And it's the two pocket variety. And it shows you every, gives you, you know, like I said, all my instructions are in here. It's a seven page, lots. Well, that does, that just has a materials list, but there's lots of pictures in the PDF as well as a full instructional, it's about 45 minutes, I think, video. It's a little smaller, so it's a little shorter. Um, or maybe I just wasn't as talky, chatty Kathy. Um, but gives you the link to either one. So this is something I will say, be adventurous beginner. That's what I like to say. If you're an adventurous beginner, give it a whirl. You can do it. I have lots of friends that have told me along the way when they were using my original cut project keeper that they would turn on the video, they would get all their stuff ready and they would just turn on the video and then do step one, pause and, and do it. Watch step two, pause and then do it. And so just give yourself grace if you're, if you're new, new, new. If not, this is gonna be so fun. So I give you links to all the materials I use. Like this is an elastic band. Um, so all the links for the materials, I'm going to go ahead and they're in that video description box as well. So the materials for all the things that I use are in there.
And so you can just click, 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 add to cart, add to cart, and get yourself one. So I'm super excited to be able to release this pattern to you guys. I wish I could make them make you all one because you guys love them, but I can only make so many keepers at a time. So this way you can make one for yourself and hopefully you love it. Um, you don't have to make a patchwork one. I do give you directions just to make, um, you know, a full solid. If you have a pretty piece of fabric and you don't want to do the patchwork, do that. You can totally do that. You don't need to do the patchwork part. You just skip, skip ahead and cut and then just put her together as a mini keeper. So I hope you're excited. I'm excited for that to be out in the world. Like I said, I will have, so this is a beautiful Riley Blake fat quarter bundle from, yep, I can't, I can't pull the fabric right now, but it's a, my, it just came out here recently. And so I loved it so much because I love the pink and the aquas associated with Christmas. And so I will have some of these available. Like I said, they're cut. Um, if you want to put your name, no, not even going to say that. I will have some of these cut and ready to go on the August 15th sale. So set your alarms August 15th at 1 p.m. Eastern is where those will go. Um, I, know, I wish I, I wanted to have them for launch day, but I can only do so many, so many things. So hopefully two weeks isn't too long to wait, but there will be some of those available. But in the meantime, you can make one yourself using, it's a perfect scrap buster fabric or a perfect scrap buster pattern because the patchwork lends itself to that. And all the sizes that you need for the inside are really, really small. Less, everything is less than a fat quarter, except for the inside cover is a fat quarter friendly, but these are even smaller scraps. So you could probably, depending on how you organize your scraps or pre-cut them, you could get a couple of them out. So I'm excited. So I would love for you to, I do have on here, for you to share. I have a hashtag. I would love for you. So if you do make one yourself, I would love to see pictures of them. Let's do a little like so make a long situation and share. I can't wait to start sharing over the next couple of days, weeks. Hopefully you're going to start making them. I get to see all the different. It's so exciting to see the different fabric choices that people choose because obviously I know what I love, but you could love something totally different. And it's so neat to see them when you make it your own. So I would love for you to tag me at tiger.lily.design on Instagram. So please, please, please tag me. And then also use the hashtag Tiger Lily Project Keeper. So that way I can see them all and share them all. I'm so excited to, to have the mini keeper now to join the mama keeper pattern out in the world. So that's what I've got for you today, friends. I'm so excited. I hope you're excited and you can start making mini keepers to hold all your mini projects. We all love mini projects, like whether it's an ornament or a little dough ball pillow, and it's perfect for travel, perfect to just pop in your purse. If you would like take the doctor's over, then rather than a huge project bag, it's perfect. Um, I will say I've tested it out many times. Trust you me. So until next time, friends, I hope you have lots of stitching, lots of fun. Happy weekend. Enjoy your summer. Stay out of the heat if you're in the heat and I will see you next time. Happy stitching.